In this video, we run Android on the desktop with keyboard and mouse, using familiar apps expandable via the Google Play Store. Join us as we install and take a tour of Prime OS. Hello everyone, and welcome to TechFix Flicks. In this tutorial, we will download, install and use Prime OS, a desktop Android variant combining keyboard and mouse operation with the familiar Android interface, enabling thousands of apps and games from the Google Play Store to be run and controlled using PC hardware. Unlike many services bearing the Prime name, Prime OS is not an offshoot of Amazon, but rather is an independently produced Android desktop variant. We essentially have three installation options. To sample Prime OS without installation, we can use the installation media as a live USB, operating without leaving a permanent footprint on the system. At the other extreme, we can create and partition an existing hard drive and dual boot alongside Windows. We will fall somewhere between the two, creating a virtual machine using VirtualBox to install and test Prime OS in a virtualized environment running within Windows, permanently retaining our apps and settings whilst being isolated from our main Windows installation. We undertook a similar project when we installed Android on PC in the tutorial linked in the written description accompanying this video, although Prime OS benefits from being specifically designed for the desktop. We begin by heading to the download link shown on screen now and again reproduced in the written description. At the download page, we are presented with the option to download one of three variants suited to the age and power of our hardware, named Mainline, Classic and Standard. In general terms, Mainline is designed for machines dating from 2014 onward, while Standard caters for machines created between 2011 and 2014. Finally, Classic is the option most suited to machines created before 2011. As our machine is sufficiently recent, we select Mainline. From the drop-down menu, we are offered the choice of Windows Installer or ISO Image. We select ISO Image as the appropriate platform for a virtual box installation. We are taken to Android File Host, where we scroll down to the large Click Here to Start Download button. Clicking expands our option to show regional download locations, and we select the download mirror which is geographically closest to us, in our case the United Kingdom. Clicking the United Kingdom mirror commences the download process, and a thank you screen appears. At the time of publication, the download size is 1.1 GB, and once complete, and in our example using Google Chrome, we click the arrow for a menu, selecting the option to show in folder. Here we see the single ISO file within our downloads folder. This ISO will be used as the basis for our VirtualBox installation. Whilst we won't cover the download and installation of VirtualBox in this video, we have covered this in detail in the tutorial linked in the written description, and we therefore pick up with VirtualBox installed and running on our host PC. We will now configure our virtual hardware. Given its Android roots, our target specification here is that of a well-powered Android phone. We click Machine to begin, and from the menu which appears, we select New. The Create Virtual Machine dialog appears, and we enter a name of our choice for the virtual machine. We opt straightforwardly for Prime OS. With our machine named, we head to the Machine Type drop-down. In the absence of a specific Android option, we select Linux. Finally, we need to select the Linux version, and from the Version drop-down, we select the latest version available. With the Linux version confirmed, we click Next to proceed to RAM allocation. By default, 1GB of RAM is allocated to the virtual machine, which we would typically increase to 2GB, although note that Prime OS is efficient in its use of resources. We can increase further, and again the key here is to extend in multiples of 1024MB, whilst leaving sufficient memory for the operation of the host system, typically by allocating not more than half of the total system RAM. As our host has sufficient RAM available, we ultimately allocate 4GB before clicking Next. We create a virtual hard disk by clicking Create at the following screen, and accept the default VDI disk file type thereafter, again clicking Next. We accept the third consecutive default by retaining dynamically allocated storage, once more simply clicking Next. The default storage size is 8GB, which we increase to 10, purely to allow sufficient room for the operating system. For more serious app use, you'll wish to allocate more generous storage, again using the optimal capacity of your phone as a guide. Clicking Create concludes this phase of the installation. Now we need to attach the ISO which we've downloaded, which will serve as the installation media. We right-click the virtual machine, selecting Settings from the menu which appears. From the default General, we move to Storage, where we find that the virtual optical drive is empty. 
From the drop down menu, we select the option to choose Virtual Optical Disk File, navigating to the ISO we downloaded at the beginning of the tutorial. We select the ISO and click Open, which attaches the ISO as a Virtual Optical Disk. We're almost ready to launch the PrimeOS installer, but first we need to modify our graphics options. Looking ahead slightly, launching the virtual machine without modifying the graphics settings may generate the error message shown on screen now, which prohibits any further progression. We've seen this error before in previous tutorials, and the fix is the same. We need to amend our display settings. Once again, select the virtual machine, and right click for a menu, from which we again select settings, moving away from the default general to display. At the graphics controller drop down, the default option is VMS VGA. To remedy this error, we change this to VBOX SVGA, and this setting is purely optional for those who encounter the error. Whilst at the display settings screen, we also increase the allotted video memory from the default 16 megabytes to the maximum 128, before clicking OK. We are now ready to run our virtual machine by double clicking it. With the virtual machine running, we're now in a position to install Prime OS. Also worth noting here, is the option to run as a live CD, which is certainly a potential avenue of exploration before a final install, allowing us to experience Prime OS without commitment to a full installation. Let's assume that we've tried the live CD environment, and we're happy to proceed to installation. The screens are navigated using the arrow keys, with selections made using Enter. We therefore move down to Advanced Options, where we select Auto Installation, or to install to a specified hard disk. Having pressed enter, a brief screen of white text on a black background appears, before we arrive at this dialog, where we press Y, or use the arrow keys and enter, to confirm our installation. The installation phase is brief, concluding quickly. At this stage, we need to eject the ISO from the virtual optical drive, to prevent future sessions reverting to the installation media, and looping back to the installation phase which we've just completed. We therefore quit the virtual machine, returning to the virtual box main interface, where we right click our virtual machine, once again selecting settings from the menu which appears. Arriving at the general settings, we move to storage, where we select our installation ISO, and from the drop down, we select the option to remove disk from virtual drive. With that, the virtual optical disk is ejected, and we can again rerun the virtual machine. In the absence of installation media, it will now boot from the virtual hard drive. The Prime OS startup sequence begins, and takes a few moments to complete. At the welcome screen, we simply click proceed. We can now enter our details, beginning with our name. Clicking the date field brings up a calendar, from which we can select our year of birth, before advancing to the entry of month and day. With month and day added, our date of birth is confirmed, and we can confirm our gender. In our case, TechFix Flix is an organisation, so we're gender neutral. From the time zone drop down, we select our time zone, and with that confirmed, we use the country drop down to make the appropriate selection. With our country confirmed, we can specify a city, although we note that not every city in the UK is covered by this list. With our city chosen and confirmed, we click next, where we are shown the license terms. Acceptance is of course mandatory in order to proceed. We are then briefly shown a series of welcome screens, before we arrive at the Prime OS desktop, where background app updating may well be in progress. Now let's conclude with a tour of the pre-installed applications, beginning with the Google Play Store. We can sign in to an existing account for full access to our app library, and from here, we have the gateway to the huge array of compatible apps from the store. Of course, Google Chrome is the default web browser, and functions entirely as you'd expect. Clicking in the lower left yields an application tray, which amongst other items, contains the YouTube app. The notification panel is immediately familiar to Android users, as are the available options and default apps. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you found it useful, please consider subscribing by clicking the logo on screen now. If you'd like to see more, there are two suggestions currently on screen. If you have a better, faster or more economical solution, let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. You're also welcome to follow us on Twitter. Until your next tech fix, goodbye.